الظروف بس ما سمحتش انها تبقى معانا رباب عملت لنا الفيديو وبعدين يعني شي هاد نيو بيبي فمش عارفه تبقى معانا كل طبعا حبايبنا اللي مسافرين يعني هم كتير الحقيقه فمش هينفع ادهم كلهم <تصفيق> <تصفيق> كل الناس دي الحقيقه احنا هم مش موجودين بس هم زي ما بيقولوا في القلب يعني. دلوقتي هن هنسمع دكتور محمد سيد. دكتور محمد مدرس مساعد عندنا في الوحده صاعد وواعد ويعني من ضمن الثلاثه كده احنا بنقول عليهم دول يعني اللي هم ايه رجاله الوحده بتوعنا الصاعدين. اه <تصفيق> بقى في العنصر الـ الـ يعني الرجالي في الوحده الحمد لله. دكتور محمد هيكلمنا على congenital heart disease spectrum of cases شكرا لحضرتك يا دكتور ان شاء الله هنبقى في البرزنتيشن النهارده انا ودكتوره سهير هنعرض spectrum of congenital heart disease انا عارف ان هو اليوم طويل ويعني ان شاء الله هتبقى البرزنتيشن بتاعتنا تارجتد وان شاء الله يبقى ما نطولش عنه طب هي دكتورة سهير كمان انا ما قلتهاش دكتورة سهير <تصفيق> دكتورة سهير من الجيل اللي بعد الجيل بقى يعني اللي بعد الـ الـ الاطفال الاولانيه زي ما بيقولوا اللي بعدها طيب اتفضل It's a great honor to be among you and among our professors and our chair person uh, we will start our presentation about uh, spectrum of cases of congenital heart disease I am Dr. Mohammed Said, Assistant Lecturer of Pediatrics and Denatology, and I will share our presentation with Dr. Suhir Abdel Basit, Assistant Lecturer of Pediatrics and Denatology. We will start with our uh, first case. Uh, our first case, it's about a male patient, a male neonate delivered on 37 weeks of gestation. He was first order of birth uh, of first cousin consanguineous parents. The mother has a previous history of first trimesteric abortion. The patient presented to our ER at day two of life with respiratory distress and refusal of oral intake for day one duration. On initial examination, the patient had moderate activity. He was vitally stable of cardiac support. On a chest examination showed that the patient had bilateral equal air entry. He kept his saturation 95% on room air without any signs of respiratory support or respiratory distress. He had palpable femoral pulsation. Initial echo showed that the patient had intact hypertrophied interventricular septum. The patient had hypertrophied left ventricle with good systolic function, and he had mildly dilated left atrium with mitral regurgitation grade 3. He had D3 septal leaflet of tricuspid valve with estimated pulmonary artery pressure 95 millimeter mercury. As we said, the patient didn't need any respiratory support. Also, he kept her saturation and maintained her saturation 95% on room air. So we discussed with our cardiology team uh, that the findings of the echocardiogram, which showed that estimated pulmonary artery pressure is 95%, and the patient was saturated without any respiratory support. So the consultation sub suggested that the patient had uh, this plastic tricuspid valve, which may uh, correlate with uh, overestimated pulmonary artery pressure. As we know, a method of estimation of pulmonary artery pressure is through uh, the regurg across the tricuspid valve. Okay, this may, this may justify why the patient had the overestimated pulmonary artery pressure, but this didn't justify why the patient had the dilated uh, left side chambers. As we said, the patient had hypertrophied interventricular septum, had hypertrophied left ventricle with dilated left side chambers, left ventricle and left atrium. So another look, we did, we did a follow-up echo, which showed that the patient had small aortic annulus, 0.5 millimeter, and the hypoblastic transverse arch. She, uh, the patient had small isthmus, 2.8 millimeter, with severe mitral regurg and dilated left atrium. This patient was candidate for multi-slice cardiac CT at the time, but due to logistic obstacles and availability of the, of the dye, this wasn't available at the time. So this patient was candidate for cardiac catheterization to visualize the aortic arch. This is the intracardiac video showing that Here we can see the patient had proximal dilatation, 
and the aortic arch is hypoblastic and small, and you can notice here the post stenotic dilatation and shouldering of the aorta post the stenotic area. The patient had hypoblastic small arch that result uh, in the dilated and the mitral rigor. Here again, we can see it. <clears throat> a dilated proximal part and dilated distal part, it's uh, related to the opening of the duct and the arch is hypoblastic. Again, I wish it's clear. So this patient had a uniform hypoblastic aortic arch. He didn't have a definite shelf of coarctation, so he was surgically in, inoperable, and there is there was nothing could be done uh, by uh, our medical staff. So he was candidate for just anti-failure measures, and uh, unfortunately, his this patient this patient passed away due to left ventricular failure. Our second case. Uh, she was a full-term female neonate delivered at 38 weeks of gestation with uneventable antenatal and denatal history. Patient developed cyanosis shortly after birth, so she was referred to NICU at day two of life. The initial x-ray showed that the patient had isolated dextrocardia. The initial echo showed that the patient had dextrocardia with double inlet right ventricle with rudimentary left ventricle connected to the right ventricle with large VSD measuring 1.1 milli. She had malposed grade vessel, both arising from the dominant right ventricle. The aorta is anterior to the left and the pulmonary is posterior to the right. And the pulmonary annulus was near atritic with minimal forward flow across. She had BDA measured four millimeter with left to right shunt, so this patient had duct-dependent pulmonary circulation. This patient was for multi-slice cardiac CT and BDA stenting accordingly. Um, after multi-slice cardiac CT, the patient developed tachycardia. Her heart rate raised to 190-195 beat per minute. Uh, at first, we thought that it may be due to anaphylaxis with the dye. She received an anaphylactic dose of hydrocortisone, but it didn't change anything about her heart rate. So she, uh, we think about the uh, central line, which was deep, as it's shown in the uh, left picture. So we replaced the central line with a shorter one in a perfect place. But it didn't change anything about her tachyarrhythmia. Uh, this is the uh, ECG, and we will have a detailed session with ECG with Professor Dr. Nanis in the next session. This patient received the first dose of propranolol without improvement of her heart rate. Then she received a loading dose of amiodarone without any improvement of heart rate. So this patient was candidate for uh, cardiac defibrillation. Here we can see the ST segment elevation, which could be non-specific, non-specific with tachyarrhythmia. Her heart rate was over 190. So she received a pre-medication painkiller. After uh, uh, DC shock, she uh, turned it to heart rate more than 200. After receiving a second dose of uh, uh, pain uh, killer, her heart rate became 156 and gained her uh, uh, sinus rhythm. Uh, as you know, we can use both uh, both position in DC shock and neonates, whether the anterolateral position or the anteroposterior position. For this patient, we use the anterolateral position, but this patient is a dechistrocardiac patient. So we reversed the position of both battles. Patient underwent safe leads for cardiac catheterization for duct standing, uh, uh, developed mild bleeding after our major bleeding after uh, the cardiac catheterization for which she received the brutamine sulfate and uh, compression till controlling the local bleeding. 
kept her saturation about nine, uh, 95 to 90 uh, on uh, minimal uh, vent settings. Anticoagulation measures were started after controlling the local bleeding. This is a chest X-ray after uh, the cardiac catheterization. You can see the stent in place. A few hours later, the patient uh, developed another cyanosis, if you can call it. Her uh, saturation dropped to 50, 70, or to 80 with higher oxygen requirements. So urgent echo was done, which showed that the patient had decreased the flow across the duct stent, and thrombosis couldn't be excluded. We tried to enhance the duct flow through the, uh, the flow through the duct. We increased the total IV fluids by 20 ml per kg, and we used a small dose of vasopressor. We used norepinephrine on a small dose to maintain the systemic circulation and the systemic blood pressure to maintain the duct flow. And we kept an eye on her chest condition. We may allow the patient and accept if the patient had some sort of tachypnea and some sort of occasional fine repetition, as long as the patient had no work of breathing. At the same time, the patient developed right-sided pneumothorax. There was air leak as shown in the, on the right side. This was deflated by thoracosynthesis and there was no need for insertion of a chest tube. Early extubation helped us not to develop a pneumos tension pneumothorax for this patient, so she was on non-invasive ventilation and weaned accordingly. And uh, um, this was the follow-up chest X-ray mild improvement. The follow-up echo with the vasopressors and when we increased the uh, uh, fluid intake, you can see the duct in place and the flow across it. Again, here is the duct and the flow across it. She has a left-right uh, left -right chant. Okay, this patient was charged safely on a, a, a beta core, a solatolol, a, a rate controller, and she, we are waiting her for the follow-up and the cardiothorax consultation for the surgical intervention, okay? Assalamu uh, alaikum. I'm Suhair Abdul Wassam, I'm the Rasul Sa'id in Neurotology. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Safa Shafi, Rais Tudna Wahdat in Neurotology, Gamat Ain Shams, for giving me the chance uh, to be here. Uh, uh, shukran Muhammad al presentation. Uh, third case. Uh, our NICU resident uh, was called to assess a new need who was delivered to ER with cyanosis at day one of life. The mother had no antenatal screening. He was delivered by cesarean section on three, 38 weeks of gestation. Uh, urgent echocardiography was done, uh, revealed inter atrial septal defect overriding of the aorta 50%, and here and uh, kivalic deviation of the septum. Uh, with mal 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 aligned VSD, a picture suggestive of trilogy of Palu as a part of bentology of Cantrell. What is bentology of Cantrell? Bentology of Cantrell is a collection of five congenital midline pairs anomalies that involves heart, pericardium, diaphragm, sternum, and abdominal wall. The five defects of the bentology as described in Cantrell's initial paper, sobra umbilical umphalocele, lower sternal uh, cleft, uh, defect in the central tendon of the diaphragm, defect in the pericardium, uh, intracardiac anomaly. Uh, it may be, uh, it, is, it is associated with multiple cardiac malformations as the tetralogy of Fallot, which is the most common malformation presented in the ventology of uh, Cantrell. Atrial septal defect, uh, ventricular septal defect, the left ventricular diverticulum, just dextrocardiac and pulmonary stenosis. The x ray IN preoperative.
ده شكل الهارد كان بره الثراس الكيج وشكل الشادو بتاعه كله باين ان هو بره الثراس الكيج ده شكل الانفالوسيل اللي كان جاي بيه العين ده بعد السيرجيكال انترفينشن ذا سيم داي ذا بيشنت ادميتد تو اور نيكي وي ووز اوبريتد ويز كارديو ثراسيك سيرجري تيم ذا هارت ووز ريديوسد انتو ذا ثراسيك كيج ويز ذا ديفكت ووز كفرد باي فلاب ده الاكس راي بوست اوبريتر Uh, unfortunately, uh, this patient passed away within four hours. He was on maximum ventilatory and cardiac support, and he wasn't not he wasn't responsive. Case number four. A male neonate, 37 weeks, second order of birth of non consanguineous parent patient uh, referred to us as a case of DTGA and coarctation of the aorta for surgical intervention. The multi slice is the same the arch of the aorta, the site of focal coarctation is the same the BDA connecting the pulmonary artery to the uh, descending aorta. The uh, patient had a very large uh, BDA. Uh, which uh, يعني ال ABDA كملت descending aorta. A case of DTGA, fenestrated intraatrial septum site of mixing of uh, venous and arterial blood. Large tubular BDA 7.5 millimeter from uh, pulmonary main pulmonary artery to descending aorta and coarctation of the aorta. A patient was ventilated since admission of cardiac, uh, he was of cardiac support uh, on prost prostaglandin A1 to keep duct dependent systemic circulation open. Uh, his baseline saturation was 70 to 85. After cardiothoracic surgery consultation, uh, uh, their opinion was to that this is an operable case. Uh, he, uh, this is one of the uh, complex congenital heart, not a simple TGA, but a TGA with uh, severe uh, or tight coarctation. Uh, so the decision was uh, to uh, do the operation on two stage. Uh, the first uh, to, to correct the tight coarctation, and uh, then after three weeks to correct the, the TGA by arterial switching. Shukran. Shukran. Shukran gazilan, Dr. Muhammad and Dr. Suhira al-presentation. Uh, دلوقتي uh, uh, هيبقى معانا Dr.